And now, to give you even more ideas, get ready for some laser fish magic. <laughs> You look terrible again this morning. Are you <laughs> waiting in line all night for a cover for the case that covers your iPad? Yeah, yeah, very funny. No, I mean, yes, I did do that, but th that's not why I'm so tired. I've been having the weirdest morning. You know, uh, when I got here this morning, there were a bunch of rabbits in the, uh, in the parking garage, you know, hop rabbits. You see that? How about this one? I was just out in the hallway I saw a man in a cape, I mean a, a cape, coming out of the bathroom. Anything? Okay. How about this? I was on the third floor earlier. I saw a white tiger going into one of the development rooms. I mean, I know the developers are a little eccentric, and we're supposed to be okay with that, but I mean, come on. This is laser fees, right? It's not Las Vegas. You know, I, I wouldn't worry too much. I don't think you're completely losing it. Um, I think what's going on is marketing is recording some more segments for this new campaign they're working on called the Laserfish Magic. All right. That might explain the rabbit, like, you know, rabbit out of a hat. Sure. You know, the white tiger could be some grand illusion. Okay. Not so sure about any guy in a cape, though, so maybe just stay away from that bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that, that's both comforting and disturbing at the same time. Let's come back to the man in the cape a, a little bit later. I actually want to talk more about this laser fish magic thing. You know, I, I think that's really interesting because when I do just a regular laser fish demo, I actually set it up to be like a magic trick. So for instance, if I'm going to say run a quick field session, you know, I, I first have the customer confirm, you know, please confirm this is just a, a regular batch of documents. You know, this is just a regular deck of cards or just a normal coin, right? And then, you know, all I have to do is just click one button and it's like, uh, you know, alakazam, right? The, the documents are separated, they're renamed. Uh, indexed, fully annotated, and, and maybe even sent to the right folder. I mean, it really is like a magic trick. I, I'm kind of like the, the Chris Angel of the ECM world, <laughs> you know, without all the makeup. Is that kind of what they're going for? Probably not. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly what they're going for, but I know it's about the unique ways that organizations can use Laserfish to solve real business problems, all right? It's about what you can actually do with an ECM solution instead of just highlighting features and functionality. I want to focus more on the solutions and less on the modules. You know, I actually I have uh, some of the earlier segments they've recorded on my phone. You know, we could watch them and see if we can figure out where the magic is. If it keeps me away from the man in the cape, I'm all for it. All right. The first time I saw Laserfish Magic was when I stopped seeing baskets of mail coming out of the mail room. You see, incoming mail is captured as soon as it's opened, and Laserfish automates the process of sorting, processing, indexing, routing, exception handling, and updating other systems. When volume was high, before Laserfish, that whole process would take multiple people more than a day to complete. So it was a constant struggle to keep up. Now, with Laserfish, there are fewer than half as many people involved. They're doing only the tasks that really require human involvement, and the entire process can be completed by lunchtime. But what really amazes me isn't that we're doing more with less. It's that everything surrounding the process is better. We have access to our information immediately. We have greater oversight and transparency. And we're truly governing the complete life cycle of the information. That's magic to me. OK, so I mean, hold on a minute. How is that magic? You know, I, I want to make sure I understand this. They're scanning mail in the mail room. I mean, what's the big deal, right? I mean, any ECM solution on the market should be able to accomplish the same thing. OK, so when you look at each individual thing she said, um, you'd be right. But I think it's the way everything's put together that makes all the difference. The magic, so to speak, is in the details. You want me to take a shot at explaining this to you? Nothing would make me happier, Jared. All right. Well, first, you have to look at the entire process and understand where things get done, all right? What was described was a process that requires a number of very specific steps as part of an overall business process. 
Now, with most systems, you have to break this into a defined capture process that manages the information until it's released into the ECM system. So you're working in two separate systems, right? You're in one system and then the other, and there's no back and forth. There's no fluid interaction. And because of that, there's a, a level of rigidity that this type of solution just naturally imposes. Sure, and, and I get that, but I mean, what you're describing, that's the way things have always been. I mean, you're complaining about these limitations, right? as opposed to pointing out the benefits of the solution you just described. So, I mean, if you're talking about capturing physical mail and then using a workflow system to automate the processes associated with that mail, I mean, isn't that just a really good example of enterprise content management? Well, first of all, I'm not complaining. You could right? have fooled me. <laughs> Here, I'm just trying to highlight what I see as an inherent limitation in traditional systems, all right? Now, what I'm saying is that LaserFish allows you to eliminate the limitations that you just said are part of any ECM implementation, all right? Instead of a capture process and a workflow solution, LaserFish allows you to define a capture workflow, all right? And eliminate that hard distinction between capture and workflow. So with the mailroom example, the mail could be scanned by a number of people immediately with just minimal document prep. And this gets the content into the system right away where it's secure, it's accessible, and any interaction can be audited. Okay, great, so it's in the system, and, and I certainly understand how that's useful, but I mean, it seems like you're, you're skipping some of the steps here. Uh, as an example, all of them. Okay. It, I'm not going to skip anything. You're getting a little ahead of yourself here, okay. all right? So what I want to do is I want to change the order in which they're completed and also change how they're completed. All right, with quick fields, our capture tools can continue to work on the documents after they've been scanned. All right, with the mail, we can distribute the scanning and automate the processing centrally. So it's like we can establish a virtual mail room that still allows for flexibility at the departmental level. Right, the first process would be something like the enforcement of image quality standards. And you do things like blank page deletion and probably full page OCR to all scan content. Right, but then there are another additional steps, like you said. The next step could be identify different types of documents. So we can perform specialized processing on each of those. We can actually determine what processes are applied to all content and what processes should be applied to very specific content. So this drastically reduces the amount of prep time that's required, right? Moreover, by distributing the processing across multiple steps, we're able to do more specific things with each additional step. And what that means is we can increase the efficiency of the overall process. So the other thing you have to keep in mind, which you probably didn't notice, is we're able to automate what we can in terms of you know, like data extraction and classification and indexing and routing, all of that stuff. But we're also able to route documents to people for input when necessary, and then just pick up the process as we go along. Okay, so, so I, think, I think I get this idea of, of removing the barrier between the capture and the workflow, but I, I guess there's some things that are still confusing me. I mean, when you talk about routing documents to people when necessary, I, I don't know if I understand that, and, and what tool are we talking about there? I mean, is it, is it the capture system, or is it the workflow we're talking about? Yes. No, 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 come on, Jared. I'm in sales. I need a straight answer, okay? I need to know whether we're talking about LaserFish quick fields with what add-ons, uh, LaserFish sorry. workflow. I mean, help me out. This is fun for me, okay? <laughs> um, I'm just trying to emphasize that you shouldn't look at them as individual products, all right? You should be looking at the overall process because the tools are designed to work together seamlessly. Right? You have to be realistic, right? And understand that not everything's going to be perfect, especially in the capture process. There's always going to be mistakes from both computer and human errors, right? There'll be missing barcodes, unrecognized forms, or incorrect data input. Somebody forgot their slip sheet, all right? The great thing about LaserFish is we can actually incorporate those mistakes or exceptions into the workflow, all right? When, when these exceptions occur, LaserFish can notify the appropriate user, not the scanner operator. Mm -hmm. They can correct the mistake, and then the system will pick up the process where it left off. So, we only have to bring people into the process when absolutely necessary. A process is made really efficient when the workflow accounts for both the expected and the unexpected. And now I'm sounding like a magician setting up a trick. Well, you're sounding like something, I'll give you that. Uh, so I think I get it. I mean, even though the capture component, it, it may seem like a, a minor detail, it actually has a huge impact on, on the overall process. So, so for instance, if, if a customer wants to talk to me about say, completing something in, in a certain time frame, they're actually leaving out a major variable, right, which is this, this capture component. So if they want to have a guaranteed response time, they really do need to consider that. 
by merging the capture and the workflow into this idea of the capture workflow, right, we're better able to predict things like the time frame or the timeline to complete an activity. And I, I think now you see where we're coming from with this, but there's, there's also more to it than that as well. So by capturing this content immediately, all the activity I've described is done within laser, laser features. So first of all, it, it's secure, and that's really important. Uh, but it's also accessible, so that at any point in the process, people can find and use the information they need, regardless of where it is in that overall process, all right? So, I mean, why is that a big deal? If people are involved in the process, they're going to have access to the necessary information. I mean, there's really nothing, you know, magic about that. Well, but there is if that process includes capture, and you're still thinking about it from the other perspective. For example, if a document's been scanned but wasn't properly identified or needs some manual data entry, you, normally you'd expect it to be sitting a queue in a capture system. But with what I'm describing, it would be stored in a queue in LaserFiche, and anyone who needs it could find it by doing a quick search because it was OCR'd when it was first sca scanned. All right? So, and then as documents continue to go through the process, we'll have more and more ways to find them, even though they haven't completed that entire process yet. But the big deal is that people can access the information they need whenever they need it. Okay, I get it. And, and, and what you're telling me, this is great, because using the laser fish, you know, quick search, the bar in the upper right-hand corner, it really doesn't matter where it is in the stage of processing because we're doing full text searching, we're searching based on the name of the document, or searching based on the index information, or, or even the annotation. So even if it was just scanned in, we're still going to be able to find it really easily. Exactly. Um, you're not going to expect somebody to find something in the process and, and force them to know where it is in the process. The whole problem is they don't know where it is, right? There's one last piece that shouldn't be overlooked as well. All of this interaction that I was talking about to complete the process, to access the information, and, and, and do all that stuff while they're being processed was done wholly within LaserFiche. So that interaction can be audited. So what, what that means is you can actually report on the complete life cycle, the complete life cycle of all the content in the system. Okay, uh, you know, you've made me a believer, so uh, can we see the next one? Let's look at it. The first time I saw the LaserFish magic was when we decided to implement the records management edition over a weekend for our entire organization. Everyone came in Monday and were scanning documents, looking up information, just using the system as they always did, and no one noticed anything. Only our records manager knew we had even done it. I was really worried when implementing a you know formalized records management system that there would be a lot of pushback from our users, but no one even really noticed. Oh, 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 Jerem, 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 I know this one, I know this one. This is about records management, and that just happens to be my specialty, okay? So my explanation is going to both uh, astound and amaze you. Hey, you know, don't get too carried away here, because I think I know where you're going with this, and I don't see how it's magic, all right? So let me, let me, let me say what I think you're going to say, and then we'll see. So since records management is, car is you know, just part of the core server functionality, all they had to do was update their license over the weekend and, what'd you say, alakazam? They had records management functionality, right? I mean, I understand that makes things easier, but it's hardly earth shattering. Well, I mean, you do understand that there's, there's more to implementing a records management solution than just installing records management software, right? Well, sure, I mean, obviously they have to use the software, right? Is that what you're getting at? I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to take a note from pre-sales when I say, that's a really good question, but not exactly. <laughs> a records management system, I mean, whether it's physical or electronic, it's all governed by the file plan, okay? Now, that file plan is based on the concept of a record series, which is where all the rules are applied and the records are stored. So the records are managed in the system based on the rules that govern their life cycles, you know, how long we actually have to keep them. In an electronic records management system, we can apply those rules directly to the folders that we already have established. That way the rules can automatically be applied and the organization is fully compliant. I get that, right? But what's the big deal? So you set it up based on the rules, the system helps you follow the rules, yes. and you can show your compliance. Okay? Yeah. That's helpful, but I'm not overly impressed. Okay, so the big deal is that the only people in the whole organization that even understand the file plan are the records managers, right? So that level of organization may work for them, but everyone else wants a system that's been designed to meet their needs, right? And the problem's even bigger than that. I mean, a records management solution with a record series-based file plan is only useful if the correct records are stored in the correct record series or the correct folder. That's where the rules are applied. 
We call that classification, and it's a really big burden for any organization to have to deal with. Now, the great thing about Laserfiche is that we can simply make classification a part of the capture process, or, you know, to your point a little earlier, this idea of the, the capture workflow, right? I mean, it doesn't make sense for the people scanning the documents to have to classify them because they don't understand the file plan. Now, the records managers, they do understand the file plan, right? But asking them to classify every document that's being scanned in, that's just gonna create a serious bottleneck and it's gonna take them away from their actual responsibilities. So because our capture tools, our workflow, and our records management system, they're all designed to work in harmony together. So it doesn't have to be a specific action, this classification. It's just part of the overall capture workflow, right? What you were talking about earlier. I see what you did, right? You thought you had a good explanation. And you realized you didn't. So you just took the one I gave earlier and called it your own, right? So yeah, capture workflow is cool, right? I understand, it's magic. But this isn't any new magic, you're just like using my magic. Okay. I, I will admit, you'll have to excuse me, I'm in sales. I take what pre-sale says, I re-say it, and I act like I came up with it. And that's what I do every day. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're absolutely correct, right? Auto classification is just another example of capture workflow, but it's really only half the story here. Like I was saying earlier, there's this, this now we can do this because we can actually set up the exact same documents to be seen in different views or different perspectives. So we call this idea transparent records management. And that's why it's such a big deal for an organization like the one we just saw to be able to deploy a formal file plan over the weekend, right? And the end users didn't even know that anything happened. I don't think there's a higher compliment to the flexibility and the agility of our software than that. I mean, that's the kind of you know, sleight of hand that most magicians wish they could pull off every day. Wow, I mean, I, I will admit that I didn't realize there was nearly as much involved as that, Good. right? But now I'm stuck with, you know, Andrew, like you're 25 years old, right? Why do you care so much about records management? <laughs> so uh, you can call me you know, an old soul if you want. I, I don't understand kids these days with their Facebookies and their tweeters and everything, all right? I have retention schedules, and, and you can laugh all you want, but I mean, this is really impressive stuff. There's no way that you're gonna be able to come up with a better explanation than the one I just gave. Well, let's see what's next. Okay. First time I saw Laserfish Magic was when we used it to solve a specific business process. Uh, the solution we came up with allowed us to focus on our primary tasks, it facilitated communication and collaboration, and it resolved conflicts by automatically escalating issues as necessary. And the funny thing is, most of the users don't even know they're using a content management system. Oh, Andrew, what's that behind your ear? Is that a, is that a quarter? No, it's a much better explanation than you just gave. Very good. So I don't think you're gonna be able to pull this off. I mean, you're trying to tell me that communication, collaboration, and escalation within an ECM system, that that's supposed to be magic? I mean, come on, Jared, that's like saying scanning and searching is magic, right? I mean, all of those things are core functionality in an ECM system, so what gives? Well, it, once again, it's all in the details, all right? In order to understand where the magic happens, you have to understand the way these concepts are applied, all right? So the terms collaboration, communication, and escalation can mean a lot of different things depending on your perspective. So now when you say collaboration, I think you're talking about document level collaboration, right? Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, how often do you and a group of people get together and take turns like typing sentences into a Word document? That's like back in the 1970s when we only had one computer in the school or something <laughs> like that, right? When I talk about communication, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about like getting an email from the system telling me to do something or leaving a note on a, on a document for a coworker. When I talk about escalation, it's not a matter of like telling someone's supervisor they haven't gotten something done or getting approval when a document meets you know, super specific criteria or something like that. That kind of functionality is helpful, but it's so document-centric and not everyone's job revolves around just working with documents. Okay, so, so Jared, I'm, um, I'm worried about you, okay? I think you and I have been spending too much time together. You just said an awful lot of words and didn't actually say anything. You're starting to sound like a salesperson, right? 
So are, if you're trying to tell me that, that all of these things that, that I use to sell laser fee solutions every day, if they're not that important, you have to give me something to work with here. Okay. Um, I'm not saying they're not important. All right? What I'm trying to say is they may not be that important to all that many people who have their own jobs to do. Right? What I'm trying to explain is that there's a level of collaboration and communication that's much more important, and that's collaboration at the business process level. Okay, so, I, I mean, what do you mean by that? We always talk about collaborating as, as part of the business process, so I, I don't think I understand the but distinction you, here. True, true, but you're talking about collaborating with documents, and that might not be the right perspective. Maybe I could walk you through this to help you understand, okay? Please. So my name is Jerob. Hi, Jerob. I manage the pre-sales group at LaserFiche. When you think about it, what's our primary job? Well, I, I will admit, I always say that you guys have a lot of responsibilities. You wear more hats than anyone in the organization. But if there's a, a common theme amongst all your responsibilities, you, you answer questions about laser fiche. You're exactly right. So our primary job is answering questions, but we have a lot of other things to do. So if we can make answering questions you know, a lot more efficient, we have more time to take care of those other responsibilities. So, Looking at it from the perspective of, of an ECM system, if our primary business process is answering questions about laser fish, how do you use that ECM solution to automate the process? Okay, I, I took a class on this yesterday, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Uh, people ask questions by sending them to presales at laserfish.com, right? So you would start by capturing the content, right? So we'll pull the emails and any attachments directly into laser fish. Then we could use the workflow system to automatically assign it to one of the pre-sales engineers, right? Maybe do it in a round robin fashion so no one's getting overworked or no one's getting all the hard questions, right? Uh, I guess taking it to the next level, we could use workflow to set up a, an automatic notification process. So if a certain amount of time passes or if somebody needs to push the question, it could be routed to someone like yourself, right? And then you could take a look at it. Well, I'm impressed. I mean, you seem to know a lot about the workflow system. Uh, that class was helpful. What happens if somebody can't answer the question that was routed to them? Well, uh, I assume that they'd, they'd do some research first. Um, but if we're talking about using workflow, they would probably indicate in some way, you know, using an index field or something like that, that they couldn't answer the question. And it would be routed to a supervisor like yourself for review. And I suppose if the supervisor couldn't answer the question, then it could go on to QA or support for help. But I mean, come on, this is taking way too long. You and I both know how the process actually works. If I have a question that I need answered, we sit right next to each other in the office. I just turn around in my chair, and I look over the cubicle, and I say, hey, Jerob, can you answer this question for me? And that's, a, that's really a perfect response. Well, I was, uh, I was bound to get one of them right today. No, what I mean is that that's the perfect response to help me illustrate my point, all right? What you described is a process that looks good on paper, but it's a process you just admitted you won't follow, all right? If you won't even follow a workflow process of your own design, why would anyone else? And if everyone goes outside the process, what good is it, right? If you only come to me when you have a tough question, how will the other people in pre-sales ever learn the answers? Right? If we always do this through communication, how will we share this information with other people who might find it useful as well? So, I mean, are you saying that we need to be more mindful of human nature? I mean, are we going to have psychologists teaching the courses at the conference next year? No, my, my point is that you have to look at the process, that you're looking at the process from the wrong perspective. You're thinking strictly about the question as a document that's captured um, and how we can define an automated you know, process or workflow that eventually provides an answer. But by focusing on just the documents, you kind of lose the forest for the trees. Okay, so uh, I don't think I'm getting this. Maybe it would help if you would tell me you know, what perspective you would use. Okay, well the first thing I would do is I'd, I'd take a step backwards. Not literally. I'm sorry. All right. Um, if we just treat the symptoms, we'll never solve the problem. Why, why do you think people ask us questions in the first place? Okay, that, that's obvious. Somebody asked them the question, and they don't know the answer. Yeah, you, you, you got that part right. Somebody asked them a question, they didn't know the answer. But they only submit it to us because it's the easiest way for them to get a good answer, right? So if we're, if we're being completely realistic here, if there was an easier way to find an answer, that's what they do. Okay, I, I'm with you. Human nature, path of least resistance. Okay, keep right. going. But th the funny thing is that we, can, we in pre-sales consult the same resources that our customers and resellers do, right? We search the support site. We consume the information that user education provides. The big difference is that we know how to find the information on the site because we know it so well, right? The problem isn't that we don't provide the answers to people's questions. It's that we don't provide answers in the context of their questions. 
So the first thing that we have to do in pre-sales is make sure that we're, we're doing a better job of providing our existing resources in the right context. Okay, I, I, I buy that, but how do we actually accomplish it? Well, I think the first step is encouraging people to ask questions through the support site instead of just trying to guess the right combination of, combination of keywords that will magically give them the right result, right? They should simply type in a question and the search engine will be tuned to provide re relevant results. But the second step is just as important, right? The second step is to match their questions with questions we've already answered instead of trying to just match their keywords with answers. The results that they see should be a list of relevant questions, not a bunch of irrelevant answers. But then we have to be realistic as well, right? If we can't provide the proper answer in the proper context, we need to offer a simple way for people to submit questions, but we need them to do it in a format that allows us to automatically categorize it for future use. Okay, so they're able to ask questions online and we'll show them similar questions in the past that have been asked that are, that are like that, right? I get that. And that seems like it'll work really well for the types of questions you get all the time. But what happens when you get a really unique question or one that hasn't been asked before? I mean, is, is it routed in the same way that, that I described earlier? That's a good You be sure that people are providing good answers or that the content is legitimate. Obviously, that's a big concern, especially since my goal is to you know, avoid people like you coming to people like me because you like the answers that I provide, right? If we let the people who ask the questions and the other people on the site vote for the best answer, we're sort of automatically establishing a ranking of the experts. And I say, don't underestimate the power of bragging rights, like within the pre-sales group, within Laserfish, or within the overall community. So, but, oh, sorry. The other thing, though, is that if we capture every question, every answer that's been provided in the entire discussion surrounding it, we're continuously improving the knowledge base that we're using to provide these immediate answers. So it's a system that keeps improving itself. And, and I get that, but I mean, what we're talking about now, it's extremely cool, but it doesn't even seem like an ECM system anymore. And thank you, I think that's exactly our goal, all right? You need to understand this was just one example of our philosophy that we take very seriously and have taught to a number of our customers. When we talk about Laserfish being an agile ECM solution, we're talking about delivering content within the context of daily processes, all right? It's about using technology to get the best out of people instead of forcing them to get things done outside the system. There really is no better use of the information assets in an organization, and I can't think of another technology that's better suited to do something like this. I think the fact that we made ECM disappear in a document-driven process is as close to magic as we'll ever get.